This is a quick overview video for contract management. We will showcase five things in this video. Creation of contracts through the end user interface, processing of requests in the power user interface, facilitating approval of workflows, the creation of contract documents from templates, and the creation of linked work orders and amendments. To begin with, we'll start in the end user portal where we'll enter a vendor contract. The end user portal is a custom HTML page that can be modified to match your current company website. Here employees can manage their profile, submit a contract, review all contracts, and review contracts they have previously submitted. First, we'll submit a vendor contract. We'll begin by selecting an internal contract owner. This list is filtered to only display the names of those individuals who are found in the contract owner or contract management teams. Next, we'll provide a contract title, contract type, and the department for whom this contract is being submitted. It automatically defaults to the department of the individual submitting the contract. This, of course, can easily be modified. We complete the form by adding a description, contract start date and end date, contract amount, and company name. We can also upload attachments by clicking the Attach Manage button, browsing to the file location, and clicking the Attach button. We can either save the record to edit it or click Submit for Review to send the contract to the contract management team for review. Now we'll switch over to the staff or power user portal. Review the contract manager page in the interface. This widget based dashboard is one of the several home pages that can be displayed by default based on the primary team of the individual logged in. On the left side of the interface is the toolbar where we can view the records that are assigned to me or to a team that I am a member of, and we can also see the tables that are utilized in this implementation. From the staff interface, we can process contracts submitted through the end user interface as well as creating contracts. To create a new contract, we click the New button and a blank form appears. The requester information is filled in automatically based on the individual creating the ticket. We can enter an employee name by entering some information, clicking the lookup icon, and selecting and importing the user information into our record. Also on this form, we can determine the approval workflow based on the record type, contract party type, contract types, contract threshold, and requester entity. Let's exit this form and process the tickets that were submitted through the end user interface. In the record we submitted, the department, department director, entity, and country information of the user is automatically populated into the system. Because the contract was entered as a standalone vendor service contract for the extant entity and a contract amount of $5,000, a workflow is selected from the workflows table. Several workflows can be created to cover every combination. Let's take a quick detour to the workflows table to observe how that is configured. Here is a sequential workflow example of a master services agreement for vendors or partners, multiple contract types, a wide threshold, and the Exton and Maidenhead entities. Based on a contract using these values, this workflow then becomes available. Here is an example of a parallel workflow. This workflow is available for standalone confidential disclosure agreements for vendors and partners. In a contract with this type of workflow, both the legal team and the contract manager team would receive a notification at the same time to approve this CDA. Back in the contract request we were working on, we can now select the workflow if more than one is available. Before submitting the contract for approval, we need to attach a contract document. Contract documents can be created offline and uploaded to the system, or they can be created from boilerplates or print templates stored in the system. Let's take one more detour to review these boilerplates or print templates. These print templates can be created directly from the table action bar. Under the printer icon, we can click 
New Word PDF template to begin the print template creation process. Looking at a previously created template, you can see where variables have been inserted into the body of the document. Back in the contract, when we click the Create and Attach button, a document creation action will take the information in the record and merge that into the print template based on the contract type. As you can see, the contract document has been created and attached to the record. Clicking the document hyperlink will allow us to save the document to review later or view in Word directly. Here is the document that was created which includes the company information and other contract data. Now that we have the contract document attached, we can submit the contract for approval. To initiate the approval process, we simply click the Submit for Approval Action button. When clicked, a notification is automatically sent to the first approver. That email will contain a hot link which will log the user into the system and directly into the contract record for review. The same email could also have the contract document attached for external review prior to approval. When the approver is satisfied with contract document wording, they can select Approved Route Forward, Rejected Route Back One Step, or Rejected Send Back for Resubmission. We'll select Approved Route Forward and then click the Review Completed Action button. As you can see, a graphic displays the current step. If we edit the record, we can see that the record is now assigned to the Finance Team for approval. When all of the approvers have completed the approval process, the contract record is automatically updated to the status of approved and an email notification is sent to the contract management team where they can begin the signatory process. Once the contract has been signed, the record can be updated to a status of signed. When the contract start date is reached, the contract will automatically be updated to active. Finally, we can also add work orders amendments to existing master service agreements and standalone contracts. To create a linked amendment, a contract manager can select the related instrument and click the Create Renewal, Work Order, or Amendment Action button. Creating a renewal contract from the existing contract is the same process, except that we would indicate that the new contract is a renewal. After clicking the button, a new window will appear with the contract instrument cloned from the original contract. This contract will be able to support an identical approval workflow process as its parent. When finished with the editing of the linked amendment or work order, we can submit the record for approval and the record will automatically be linked to its parent. This completes the summary video for contract management.